Hello there gaming fans as well as my amazing YouTube subscribers and welcome back to LSPDFR. My name is Daniel Parks and in this episode I'm going to show you how to set everything up like I use it in LSPDFR. My control panel, my steering wheels, the pedals, and my macros I'm going to save for a different episode. But everything else as far as what I'm going to be using and what I use a lot of I'm going to show you guys today. So if you guys are new make sure to go ahead and hit the subscribe button and if you guys like the video make sure to go ahead and leave a huge thumbs up I am gonna be walking around and rolling around I guess in a Blaine County Sheriff's Office car just during the whole testing and showing you guys how it's gonna look and stuff like that I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my ELS here so you have your first stage which are going to be the uh, scene lights all on scan then you have your primary uh, then you have your third stage uh, which is going to be all of your lights and it's all on scan so it's going to be completely different now all of these up here are going to be my lights you're going to have my headlights i have my blackout lights my takedowns and then my uh cruising lights so i'll go ahead and shut those off so i'll show you my cruising lights that's what the cruising lights look like I'm shutting those off and then i can have my takedowns and then i have put my headlights on real quick For some reason they're not there they are all right so then I could take uh, then I have my takedowns or blackouts I'm sorry my blackouts blackout everything uh, whenever I get on si on scene or something go ahead and shut that off all of these are gonna be my sirens I have my actual light stages here uh, button number 17 so I go ahead and turn those on and then I have my siren here I have my horn here number 19 here and then my 20 is going to be the either changing the sound of it immediately or if it's if I don't have my siren on I can just turn it on and just manually wail these right here are all my different siren tones so you have number 11 here which is going to turn it on and off as well then you have 13 which is going to turn on this second one where that one then you have the third and then fourth this is going to start my second one here number eight 16 here it's gonna start the second siren and go ahead and shut all those off not that important anyway so those are all my sirens all of these are my sirens all of these across the top are my lights some of these others do other things and I'll show you guys whenever I actually make a traffic stop they'll do different things as well as far as number 21 here goes, that's going to be my blimp whenever I'm actually coming up behind somebody and I want to mark them. I use 21 to mark it. And then I use this to go uh, with my visuals. So I go, if I'm in first person, I'll use it to look left and right. I am using the field of view mod inside the car, which is why you can see out of the top up here. Yeah, I don't like it, but there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I like the mod having the field of view. I actually drive a lot better with it. But these down here, down the side, you have 22, 23, and 24. You're going to have 22, which is going to turn on my radar down at the bottom. Uh, 23 here is going to change the mode. So in the front, in the back, so on. And number 24 actually locks it in. So whenever I'm running radar, I'll just hold my finger down here. As soon as, as, soon as somebody comes by that is you know, speeding, or if I just want to mark them, then I'll just hit that button at number 24 here, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Oh. So I can lock it in just like that. So the guy was going 32 miles an hour. Go ahead and unmark that. Uh, let's see. I can uh, lock my ELS by doing that, especially if I'm in the computer. I can type stuff without having you know that thing go crazy. I can also disable my visual uh, looking around and stuff. I uh, also have my uh, vocal dispatch right here, so I can push this button down right here and then speak what I need to speak. Let's go ahead and pull somebody over really quick so I can show you some of these other buttons. I'm not going to be looking for somebody in particular that I'm going to just, you know, pick on. I just need to find somebody that I can... Uh-oh. I loosened this up on accident. Now I'm going to pull this uh, four-wheeler over just for the heck of it. So again, I'm going to use my 21 button here to go ahead and mark them. And then as soon as... Oh, he put his helmet on. A little late, bud. Go ahead and light him up. 
Now this button right here will disable the traffic stop. This one right here will uh, do the mimic. So I can get him moved over a little bit. So he'll mimic me. Go ahead and shut that off. Then I can use, I'll use my keyboard for my, I haven't figured out which button I want to use. We've got a wanted felon on the um, uh -oh. Shores. Target is on I haven't figured out a button that I really wanted to use for my uh, pulling up my computer and stuff, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Anyway, I'll go ahead and let this guy go. So go ahead and cancel that traffic stop and then let him get about his way. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what the application I use to actually set all of this up before I move over onto the steering wheel. So I'll go ahead and minimize that. The program I actually use is going to be Pinnacle Game Profiler. And you can see it here. I've used this for quite a while. I think I paid like $4.99 for it or something like that. And you can tell I use it uh, for different games. I actually have used it for more than this. Uh, but I'm glad that... Uh, you know, I, I'm able to use it. It's, you know, super cheap and it's awesome. It's really easy to do. And all I do is whenever I load up GTA, I just double click here and it will launch the profile for it. If I'm setting up the game profile, I'll make sure that the uh, application that I'm going to be running it on is there. So GTA, if you want to add one, you just go to new and then uh, you can add the, the file, you know, the executable right here. You'll do that. And then you will create your configurations. This one's going to be mine. I don't know what some of these others are. I think I had to import it whenever one got, you know, something. I don't know. Anyway, so I've got my uh, different buttons here. So let's say if I wanted to just push number 15, it automatically recognizes all of the buttons. So if I hit 15, I can do a quick assignment. And then I'll just hit three on my keyboard, which will then key uh, mark that one as used by number three. So anytime I hit the 15, it will use the uh, the third um, siren, whatever the case may be. And it's literally for all of them. I can go through and I can just push one, two, three, four, five, and it literally go through the list and just assign it to various keys. Same thing with all of these buttons over here. I use this for uh, American Truck Simulator and a Euro Truck Simulator as well. Luckily, it has native support inside, so I don't have to worry about setting it up with this application, but... It's good that I still have the opportunity if I needed to. That is the program I use for that. Uh, and then again, all I do is save it, close it out. No, I don't want to. I do want to discard that. And then as again, all I do is once I'm here, I double click on this. It goes ahead and launches that profile. Now that I'm in it, I can go back to having full control over everything in here that I want to do. Uh, let me go ahead and show you. Now that I am free as a bird, I'll let that guy go. My blanket here keeps getting stuck on the wheel, so it's making it a little bit m messy as far as me driving goes. That This Dodge here, man, has some power to it. All right, so let me go ahead and show you. I also, for the steering wheel and the pedals, I use this program called Manual Transmission. And also... Uh, it works with this. This is the main reason it's for is with the shifter and stuff. This is a Logitech G29, so I have the shifter. But obviously, there's no point in using it for a, a police car. So, you know, that's why I don't have it hooked up. And I'm just using, I should be using automatic. Well, it's not enabled anyway, so I'm not really that worried about it. So the first thing you're going to do is once you get this installed, it's super easy to install. You just basically copy over uh, the ASI to uh, the root folder of GTA and then you have uh, some scripts and stuff that are uh, another folder that goes into your uh, root folder as well so you know it's super easy you just copy and drag it over there if you guys want me to do a video of that I will but copy it over drop it in and I've got it uh, my key is F2 key uh, to be able to pull it up and then it automatically recognizes the active input which is nice so it automatically recognizes this first thing you're going to do is when you come in you're going to go to your steering wheel and you're going to go down to uh, the steering wheel axis setup. I'm going to do an outside view so you can see exactly what I'm doing here. So as far as the configure steering wheel, always, always, always start with the left. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So I've got, oh, my little boom here is starting to shake a little. Okay, so uh, the reason why is because, look, I'll show you again. So you can see it's left and right now. Whenever I turn left and right, it actually turns left and right. But if I start going to the right, the wheel automatically still goes to the left, which means that you're then going to have to invert it because it's backwards. 
So again, once you're conf once you're you know configuring it, always start to, from the left side, go all the way around, then go to the right side, all the way around, and let it kind of spin back in there. Throttle, just click on the enter key and then push on the the throttle. Same thing with the clutch, uh, the brake, and then the clutch as well. And that's all set up. That's literally all you have to do. Now, one thing I would change. I do adjust some of these from time to time, especially uh, my high speed. Uh, is uh, The steering wheel starts to shake a lot. You'll be sitting there, you'll be doing this, all of a sudden you'll start flipping and stuff. Uh, so I adjust a lot of those settings uh, right now if you want to take a look at those. At uh, 67 and 67, I kind of changed my dampener a little bit, make it a little bit more controlled, a little more realistic. It doesn't make the vehicle as light and you know you don't move around and shake around as much. Then down below that, you have your steering wheel angles. I definitely suggest changing your car soft lock. And I've got mine at 630, and I'll show you what that does. I'll go ahead and hide these things here. So let's say if I wanted to turn my wheel, if I'm changing this, you can see the wheel starting to turn in. Uh, too much. So from now on, when you turn, it'll either turn more or less. So once you get up to you can see how long it took to turn. So like up here at the higher, which is I think it starts at like 900, it takes a lot longer to turn, a lot wider of a turn. So I shortened mine up a little bit. So then whenever I turn, it's a lot quicker. Uh, the wheel turns a lot sharper, so I don't end up taking wide turns in and out of places. So I would definitely turn that around to 630, somewhere around there. You can kind of fidget with that if you want to, to make it easier on you. Uh, let's see, steering wheel button setup. I use these here, these paddles for my left and right blinkers. And basically what you do is you go down, so indicator left, and then you just push the button. Same thing with indicator right. Hit that button there, and then it goes ahead and saves those. Those are the only ones I really do. And then, because, you know, I'm huge on role play, so I will sit in here and I'll, you know, have my blinkers left and my blinkers right. I prefer that. I'll, if I'm turning, I'll use my blinkers and things like that. So that is uh, all of that as far as the application I use to run this, as well as the application I use to run this. Now I do have another one which is going to be just the Logitech gaming software that I use for the steering wheel. And I don't do anything really except for the spotlight. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. It's just a couple of buttons here. And I have those auto like set up to where once I load in, uh, then you know it's it automatically runs for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what that looks like. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump out here on the road here. I'm just gonna pull somebody over so yeah, I can show you guys what the spotlight looks like. Whoa, it's a wide turn. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this guy over here in this tornado. He didn't do anything wrong. I'm not gonna write him a ticket or anything, but. Go ahead and mark him with this button here. Light him up. Go ahead and do the mimic. That's a voodoo, that's not a I thought it was a different one. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and back up. I don't like my policeman's alley there. There we go, that's a lot better. All right, so my spotlights. So as far as my steering wheel goes, I push the L2 here, and then I can adjust it uh, just like this. You know, left and right, up and down. And I could do that, you know, no matter what, if it's a person or if it's a, you know, I could do this if I wanted to and just follow them around. It doesn't have to be, oh, what the heck is that car doing over there? But anyway, so I can adjust that. What the world is going on down here? I, I can adjust that, you know, to where I see fit. I'm going to go let them get about their business. Anyway, so that is pretty much everything. So I have the Logitech uh, software that I use for the steering wheel. I have Pinnacle Game Profile that I use for the command uh, thing here. And then I use manual transmission for the steering wheel and the pedals as far as anything other than the buttons. 
So I use that for all of that. So those are the applications that I use. I'll go ahead and leave those down in the comments, or not in the comments, but in the description below, I'll include those and where you can get that, you know, those applications if you want to use it. This right here is the best thing that I could have ever gotten. Uh, this right here is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love this thing. It adds a lot of realism and a lot of, uh, you know, just everything into the game. I absolutely love it. And the next episode I'm going to show you guys, I do everything with macros. I'll go ahead and show you guys right before I, I get off. But all of my buttons, go ahead and show you guys this really quick. You can see here I use the uh, gaming software. You have my steering wheel here. I also have the G15, which is a really old keyboard, but I'll never get rid of it because of all of the keys, as you can see on the left-hand side. I have three different stages here that I can use for different buttons, and that right there saves my life. A lot of times it saves so much time. I don't have to cycle through. Everything is a macro. So I'll go ahead and show you what one of those looks like. And let's go ahead and find... Let's see if I can find a vehicle. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of my vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and get this car towed away. So all I do is hit one, one button. So I hit the G3 key. And then it's dispatched to Voodoo too. So whenever I'm role playing, I'll be you know be like one Lincoln 18 dispatch key roll me a 1051 out to, uh, you know, wherever I am, <laughs> Marink. I don't know how to even say that. And then Algonquin, Algonquin, and then I'll say you know hit the button to go ahead and dispatch that. So you know it makes the whole thing a lot easier. Even if I'm rolling up, I'll hit one key to do a plate check. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. Again, I'm not going to do much of it tonight um, with this particular video because this is just this setup. All right, so I'm going to show you what that looks like here. So I've got uh, my key down here, and I've got my G5 key for a plate check. So I'll get behind them, and especially if I'm role-playing, I'll just call out their license plate. And then otherwise, I'll just hit the button at 21 Union Edward 136. Like and then it will automatically run the license Ida, plate. Union, Edward, so it's a macro, one, three, completely set up. It's going to take a little while to show you guys how that is set up, which is why um, I'm going to wait for its own kind of video. Other than that, again, if you guys are new here, make sure to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you guys liked the video, make sure to go ahead and leave a huge thumbs up. I really do hope you guys enjoyed it. Other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the night, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.